With the 2023 NHL Draft one week away, the rumor mill is swirling which prospects will go where. Today, we will be answering that question with my top 50 mock draft for the 2023 NHL Draft, predicting where each prospect goes and who your team will take in the 2023 NHL Draft. So watch till the end for every single pick and hit that subscribe button if you're new for more draft content just like this all the time, all year. Now let's get things started with the first overall pick in the 2023 NHL Draft. And of course, there is no surprise here. The Chicago Blackhawks will take their generational center in Connor Bedard. What comes after that, though, is the most interesting thing. Now going on to second overall and the Anaheim Ducks, it's been a contention whether they'll go for Adam Fantilli or Leo Carlson, but to me, it's practically locked in to Adam Fantilli, another fantastic first line centerman, the best second overall pick in my opinion since Jack Eichel, he will be a stud with the Ducks. Then going on to third overall here, we have a pretty big question between whether the Blue Jackets will select Will Smith or Leo Carlson. We know that they'll take a center at this year's draft, Aaron Portsline of the Athletic Reporting So, but I think it will end up being Leo Carlson. Even though Will Smith might fit their game a little bit better with the fast speed that he creates, Leo Carlson will be a great first line center for them with some great two-way play and fantastic passing ability. Him alongside Line A would be just genius. Now going on to fourth overall here and the San Jose Sharks. This one's an interesting one. We've heard a lot of rumors surrounding Michkov around uh, Zach Benson, but to me, I think they will end up selecting Will Smith. To me, for the Sharks, I hope at least this is their pick because it would be, I think, the best one for them. When you look at their prospect pool, they got a few centers there, but nothing that's absolutely amazing. Will Smith, if he tops out, though, has the talent, has the tool set to be a top six, potentially first line center. And I think for the Sharks, that's what they should go after and will go after on draft day. Now going on to fifth overall and the Montreal Canadiens, easily the pick that we talked about the most just because of how many different options are there. There's been all the reports of outside of that top four center core of Matthew Michkov, you got Zach Benson reported, you got players like David Reinbacher and Ryan Leonard and, and other players like Dalibor Dvorsky in this slot. But to me, I think it will end up being Dalibor Dvorsky. Even though there's been some hints recently that Michkov might be the guy from Montreal, I think Dvorsky will be their pick in the end as a center who could top off as an okay second liner i think montreal will go for it just because of the center depth in the system isn't quite amazing besides really owen beck i think Dvorsky will add on to that even though i'm not the highest on him that physical play is brilliant and he's a player that could really be a solid defensive second line center if that potential really goes all the way Next up at sixth overall here is the Arrows and the Coyotes, another pick that we've talked about a lot here. I think it will end up being David Reinbacher, though. We've talked about it a lot. I think Reinbacher still fits Arizona a lot here, and they could go for a couple options, but to me, with their defensive prospect pool, it's pretty barren, especially with the size, and I think at six foot two, 187 pounds, and what he was able to do in the National League, as well as the U-20 World Juniors and the solid play in the World Championships, I think the Yotes will be really attracted to the Austrian stud in Reinbacher. Next up, though, let's go on to a fast Fascinating pick here involving the Philadelphia Flyers, and recently I've had Ryan Leonard being their pick 110%, but with what Daniel Bier has done at recently with his GM spot with the Flyers, I think he'll honestly end up selecting Zach Benson. 5'10", 159 pounds, to me the best defensive forward in this draft that also has great offensive skill. 98 points in 60 games. To me, this would be a great pick for the Flyers to make and would just prove to them or to us that they're going in a different direction here. Benson would be an excellent addition though and would easily become their most talented prospect. Cutter Gauthier has a lot going for him, but Benson is the real deal. Next up at number eight, we're going on to another crazy pick here, and one that's been debated a lot recently, but really one name has risen to the top if he's available, and that is Matt Vamishkov. Even though there has been the reports of him slipping outside the top 10, I still don't believe if he's available to the Caps, they will end up picking him. I mean, imagine you're Alex Ovechkin and you see Michkov on the board and they don't pick him. I don't understand how that would make any sense to him and for really most of us too. It just is such a good fit and he would instantly become by far the most talented prospect in that pool and would just be legendary if he was able to play some games with Ovi at the end of his career as well. 
Next up, going on to ninth overall in the Detroit Red Wings, another team that I've mostly had dialed in for a while here. I've had Oliver Moore being their pick if he's available, but I have a feeling here, just a late feeling, they might end up going for Ryan Letter. Center slash winger can play both positions well, but 5'11", 181 pounds. Don't let that size fool you, though. He is a true power forward and plays it in every single way, but his shot, the decision-making, and the leadership he provides, I mean, Detroit's going to be all over him, and as a potential second-line center, I think Leonard would fit in perfectly there of Detroit if they're able to develop him in that way. Next up, going on to number 10, and a really uh, interesting one here as well is St. Louis, another team that I've had a, pretty much locked in for a while here, mostly with Braden Yeager at 10th overall, but again, another pick that I had last minute decided to change here. Next up, I have Nate Danielson. To me, I think Danielson makes a lot of sense for the Blues pool. I think they're going to go for a center here with how Barron is center-wise in their prospect pool, but at 6'1", 187 pounds, being the captain for the Brandon Wheat Kings this last year, 78 points in 68 WHL games. We've seen them in the past go for WHL for the top pick like neighbors a couple drafts back i think danielson though brings that leadership that poise that can that maturity that i think the blues will really quite like and that accelerated offensive game that's getting, been getting better every single year i think the blues will definitely appreciate that next up going on to a number 11 and the vancouver canucks we've seen a lot of reports recently the canucks have been in really big interest with tom willander i think they will end up selecting him 11th overall now i don't have him nearly as high i have him later in the first round but i can absolutely see where the Canucks are coming from here. Six foot one, 179 pounds, really mobile, really consistent, quiet, but extremely effective. And you can see this year playing a couple SHL games, mostly in the junior 20. He's going to be with Boston University this next year. But to me, for the Canucks, he could really solve a lot of defensive holes on that decor and bring some size too, as he plays much bigger than he is. Now going on to 12th overall here and the Arrows and the Coyotes. We saw them pick Ryan Barker 6th overall. I'm even going to go for Colby Barlow. I've always gone for the Ryan Barker Barlow pairing with Arizona, but to me, it's really quite standard for them going for that size, but especially Barlow, that goal scoring is something that they don't have a lot in that prospect pool really besides, I would say, Dylan Gunther in spades, but to me, Barlow could really bring that element, especially on the power play. You can see 46 goals in 59 regular season games this year. To me, Barlow would make perfect sense for the Yotes especially at number 12. Next up, going on to 13th overall in the Buffalo Sabres. We've heard some recent reports that they'll be going for a Russian, and it's really between Daniil Butte and Dmitry Simashev. I think they'll go for Daniil Butte here. Now, at 6'5", 203 pounds, he's an actual truck out there. And even though he's a little bit of a clunky skater, in my opinion, he's still a player that has a lot of potential, and that goal scoring is quite solid. You can see in the MHL, 15 goals in, six, in 26 games with local Yaroslavl. And to me, with Butte, even though he'll be a project for Buffalo, they have such a good prospect pool that they'll be fine taking that on. Next up, going on to 14th overall in the Pittsburgh Penguins. This one will be a great pick to make for the Pens, and that is Oliver Moore. I see Moore slipping a little bit, mostly because of the size and point production concerns, but he's a great creator. And I think as a playmaker in the later years of Crosby and Malkin's career, could be great there as a second line center who can learn behind Crosby, and that would be brilliant for him. In terms of pure talent, to me, he's a top 10 pick. I think for the Penguins, it would be the perfect system for him to go to. Next up, on to 15th overall in the National Predators. I think they'll go for a center here as well, and I think they'll select Braden Yeager. Now, we've seen the Preds take a lot of Canadians recently, especially on the forward side. I think Yeager will continue that trend, but six foot, 165 pounds. You can see just a couple of solid seasons with Mucha over the last couple of years. 78 points in 67 regular season games this last year, but as a solid uh, shot creator, as a player that has a good play driving too, and has just that great shot when it is in the right position, I think the Preds will appreciate that a ton and really like to add add that on their prospect pool, which is quite underrated already. Now let's move on to 16th overall here and the Calgary Flames. This is one that I've kind of gone back and forth on a lot on this channel, but to me at 16th overall, I think they'll select London Knights D-man Oliver Bonk. Now, Oliver Bonk has a lot of hype behind him, great shot, and some good qualities physically. Six foot one, 176 pounds, and of course, the son of Radic Bonk, absolute legend there. And you can see what he's done in London, 40 points in 67 regular season games, 11 points in 21 playoff games. But to me, with that size, I think mean, Calgary will appreciate that. But as a decent buck mover, has been getting better throughout the season. I think for the Flames, they'll end up selecting him there. Next up at number 17, we're going to advance on here to the another pick here by the Detroit Red Wings. They, of course, end up going for Ryan Leonard, ninth overall. All. I think they're going to go for another forward here. I think it'll be Matthew Wood. Now, a lot more likely to play wing here in Detroit system, but I think that's okay as a second line center, perhaps behind Lucas Raymond and around that same range as Jonathan Bergeron. At six foot three, 190 pounds, he'll bring that 
physical element that I think Detroit will be looking for in this draft, at least on the forward side. You can see, though, 34 points in 35 NCAA games. Even though, to me, his skating is really quite bad, just putting it simply, I think Detroit is a system where they would want to recorrect that and feel like they could. At 17th overall, it could work out for them. Now at 18th overall, the Winnipeg Jets are next up here. I have them selecting Russian D, Dmitry Simashev. To me, this would be a fantastic pick, and for Winnipeg, their D, prospect pool-wise, isn't amazing, isn't quite there, really. I think Simashev is the best defenseman in this draft, in my opinion, would really boost that a lot with his great skating, solid physical traits, and a lot better offensive game over the year. To me, Simashev could be excellent as a second uh, second defenseman who's great on that defensive side at 6'4", 201 pounds, that size of ankle carry him a long way. Now going on to 19th overall in the Chicago Blackhawks, they selected Bedard first. I think mean, they'll go for another forward here in Quinton Musty. Now, I think they'll look to add some size here with the 19th overall pick. Musty is perfect. Six foot two, 190 pounds, plays like it every single shift, but also doesn't back down from that skill set. Also isn't afraid to take big risks and to really use his playmaking style and, and great vision to his advantage. To me, I would love this pick on the Chicago Blackhawks. 78 points, 53 games in the OHL this year. It, he would be stellar in Chicago and alongside that four group already building with players like Nazar and Reichel, Bedard and Musty would be perfect there. Now to round out the top 20 with our next pick, this is the Seattle Kraken's first pick in the draft. And besides really Riker Evans, they haven't really drafted a ton of big time D, I guess Riker Evans and Ty Nelson, but I think another offensive D would fit them quite well in Axel Sandin Palika. Now, 5'11", 181 pounds. I think for the Kraken, this would be a really interesting addition for him. That great puck moving, solid risk taking D who has some great skating abilities as well. He's a player that I think would really fit into Seattle's system. And even though he might take a little while because of that rawness i think eventually he'll be a solid middle pairing power play guy for them now let's go to the minnesota wild and to me they're going to end up slugging a center in this draft it's just a matter of who to me samuel hansik though fits a lot of their play style and i think will definitely be the main target for them six foot four 185 pounds and this year with the giants in 50 in 43 games had 56 points in the whl to me that solid physical and vision traits will lead to a pretty high pick in this draft and even a little bit higher honestly than 21st overall but to me minnesota is a fantastic fit Next up was going to 22nd overall with the Philadelphia Flyers. They, of course, went for a really solid pick with Zach Benson, 7th overall. But I think they'll go for a little more size at this one with Charlie Stramel. Now, at 18 years old, one of the best puck protectors of this draft. And even though he's not the greatest skater, in my opinion, he's still a player that could pretty much be a solid third-line center for you at the next level and has that great size. And I think a team like Philadelphia would still be looking for not the greatest season in the NCAA, and but was still pretty solid in the U20 World Juniors for Team USA. And I think for, for a team like Philadelphia, Again, as a middle six center going forward, I think they'll like that in their pool quite a bit. Now going on to 23rd overall in the New York Rangers. This might be one of my hotter takes here, but I have them selecting Danny Nelson, who's one of the more raw prospects of this draft, in my opinion, a defenseman turned forward, one of the youngest prospects as well this draft, but 6'3", 203 pounds, has extremely good physical traits, especially around the net. And even though he'd be a reach for me, I can see where the Rangers are coming from here. I don't love his skill set, but he's a player that knows how to use his strengths and he knows how to really avoid his weakness as well. And I think for or a team like New York who's looking for maybe a third line center of the future Nelson I think could be that now at 24th overall we have the Nashville Predators here and this one's interesting because of course they selected Brady Yeager before I think they're going to go for a defenseman here and I think it will be Tanner Molendyke great puck moving a skating defenseman who has good vision around the ice especially with the passing game gets better and better every single game I watch from him even though he's a little bit smaller I think Nashville will still stomach that in this year in the WHL with Saskatoon 37 points in 67 games which doesn't pop off at you but he's doing a lot of the right things and I think Nashville will really like that in their system and especially in the next few years he could be a player that even if he's even if he's a little bit raw it might take a little while especially some seasoning the AHL I think we'll get there in a top four role Next up at number 25 here, the St. Louis Blues. They have three picks, this being their second. We, of course, saw them pick Nate Danielson 10th overall. I think they're going to go for Ethan Gaucher with this pick. We've seen them draft a lot of QM JHL players recently. We have, of course, players like Zachary Bolduke and, of course, training for players like Zach Dean. Ethan Gaucher, I think, will be a part of that with Drummond Bill this last year, as well as, as just what he was able to do with Shearbrook. I mean, he's going to be an interesting player to look at over the next few years. I'm not super high on him especially when it comes to the physical traits. I think that will be something that really needs to improve. But at the same time, there's an okay skill ceiling there that I think St. Louis will want to go after. 
Now on to number 26 and the San Jose Sharks. I think they'll go for a D here and we'll go for Mikhail Gulyayev. Now, over the past few years, they haven't been afraid to draft Russians and Gulyayev, I think, will be a player that could bring some great ceiling top end potential, I think, for San Jose. Even though there might be some rawness and some more bustness there, I think this is a player that can move the puck extraordinarily well, has a fantastic brain in the offensive in, in the offensive zone, and to me, as a player for San Jose, they're kind of missing a little bit. And I think that, in that prospect pool, He'd bring an element that they don't quite have. Now on to number 27 and the Colorado Avalanche. I'm going to have them picking Callum Ritchie. Now to me, this would be a really interesting bet for the Avs, a player that would have, I think, easily the most potential in their pool just being added on top of it. And I think as a center, that's a strong bet for the Avs to make, especially considering how weak their center situation is right now. But 6'2", 187 pounds, has some great silky in tight speed and can skate pretty solidly. This last year, a point per game in the OHL. But I mean, for the Avs, that skill ceiling is something they can turn something even better potentially even a second line center if everything works out now on to 28th overall and the Toronto Maple Leafs. I was considering them maybe even going for a goaltender here, but I think they will select Lucas Dragasevich. Now, at 18 years old, he's a fascinating project. One of the best offensive players in this draft, but easily, in my opinion, one of the worst. At 6'1", 194 pounds, his skating isn't also amazing, but I feel like Toronto just has so much in their in their coaching and their staff skating-wise that they could turn Dragasevich into a much better product. I think that's what they'd be looking at. 75 points in 68 WHL games this last year no doubt the offensive mind is fantastic and i think the least will gravitate towards that now going on to 29 overall and the st louis blues again their final pick in the first round i see them going for a d here and it being Caden price now with the Kelowna rockets he's one of the youngest players in the draft of an august birth date but six foot one 181 pounds you can see solid in the whl this last year solid in the world juniors for team canada but i feel like when it comes to Caden price he's a player that also has a little bit of boomer bust to him great puck moving ability but can get beat a lot along the boards i think this is a player that st louis will want to teach a lot physically and i think there might be a lot of room to grow there as well now going on to 30th overall and the Carolina Hurricanes. They're going to make a smart pick no matter what because that's the Carolina Hurricanes brand. And I think they'll end up selecting Gavin Brindley. Now if they select Gavin Brindley here, oh my goodness, would this be awesome to see. I mean, he fits Carolina's system so well. Even though he is a little bit smaller, to me, he's a player that brings so much in the offensive game. His smarts are just brilliant. He always is able to find somebody around the ice for a pass. And he's a player you saw with Michigan this last year. Almost a point per game. Was great in the U20 World Junior for the U.S. and to me this would be a home run move to make if you're the Canes. Now moving on to the Montreal Canadiens second pick in the 2023 draft with the 31st overall pick with the Panthers pick. I think we'll see them select Otto Stenberg here who I think will translate as a winger for the Habs but a 5'11", 181 pounds really start to get some more hype again with his fantastic U18 World Juniors getting 16 points in seven games there but you can see he's been just a solid puck mover and I think a really solid goal scorer at that pro level and he's a player that I think has a lot of dynamic offensive playmaking that kind of goes on the radar does a lot of the right things all the silky right things and can do a lot of work around the boards as well even though he will need to boost that physicality and get it a lot more consistent at the NHL level now going on to 32nd overall pick and the last one in the first round with the Vegas Gold Knights, they have their first round pick. I think they'll select Grayson Sachin of the Seattle Thunderbirds, 18 years old, 5'11", 165 pounds. Sachin is just an absolute dog out there. A point per game in the WHL with Seattle this year. To me, he's just a solid hard worker, has some great next level speed, and that playmaking is fantastic. I think for Vegas, they'll definitely look at that in the prospect pool, look at that work ethic, and really want to take it. 32nd overall now going on to the first pick of the second round we're going to go to the 33rd overall pick in the anaheim ducks and i see them selecting theo lindstein now it's a really interesting pick here with anaheim i think they'll go for a d six foot 181 pounds and you can see just playing a lot in the shl and the junior 20 in the world in the u18 world juniors just a solid player who doesn't have any weaknesses but also not a ton of huge uh big 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 strengths and to me, Valenstein, that could high, uh, hold him back a little bit. But I think for Anaheim, as maybe a fourth defenseman, they could be looking at that into the system as a more safe pick with all the offensive D they have in the prospect pool and on the team already. 
Now on to 34th overall in the Columbus Blue Jackets. We already saw them take a center in Leo Carlson. I think they're going to take another Swedish center here in David Edstrom. 6'3", 187 pounds, just like Carlson is an absolute mammoth. And you can see he's played some games in the SHL. has gotten some good success there. Some solid success in the Junior 20 and was great in the U18 World Juniors. But to me, that goal scoring is one of the best parts about Edstrom. But that com compactness, the smart playmaking. He's just a guy that doesn't make too many really big mistakes. And he's a guy that physically has some great traits too and i think for a team like columbus they'll like that a lot especially as maybe a third line position there and they can even have players like sillinger and players like kent johnson on the wing because of their center depth and i think that's something they might be looking for as well now on to 35th overall in the Chicago Blackhawks. This is where I think Andrew Crystal will fall. To me, I think he will drop quite a bit in this draft, but I think Chicago is going to love to have him. Even though they might want to prefer to take a D here, I don't think they're going to be able to pass up a player like Crystal with the talent that he has. Even though to me, the skating can be a little bit of a weakness, to me, he's still a player that has some just jaw-dropping moves to make and just in tight can do some things you've really never seen before. But that electricity, I think, will be fantastic for the Blackhawks. And man, if he's in the same lane, line as Connor Bedard, watch the heck out because it's going to be a highlight reel every single friggin' shift. Now going on to 36 overall, to me, this is well, where we'll start to see a little bit of the goaltending dominoes fall. To me, this is definitely one of the best goaltending drafts in a long time, especially one of the deepest. Next to a 36th overall, the San Jose Sharks, I think they'll end up selecting Michael Robel. Six foot six, 216 pounds, absolute truck out there. And you can see he's been playing mostly in the USAHL this year and some great performances with Czechia in the U18 World Juniors. To me, if Robel, that size and the way he uses it is fantastic. But he's a player for San Jose they'll be looking at as a starter of the future. Now we're going to go on to the 37th overall and another team looking for a starter here. Next up, the Canadians will end up selecting Trey Augustine. Now, to me, it's almost confirmed the Haswell using at least one of these second round picks or even the late first to select a goaltender. It almost has to happen. But I think Augustine is a great bet to make. Even though he's close to being the best goaltender of the draft for me, just right behind Jacob Fowler, to me, Augustine has a lot of great traits. He's not the biggest with six foot one, 179 pounds, but he's a player that is tight, can make good reads, and has just had consistent success all throughout. He'll be going to Michigan State University, and I think he'll be great there and a solid goal center for the Habs in the future. Now going on to 38th overall and the Arizona Coyotes, another team that could take a goaltender, but I think they'll go for another D-man here in Jacob Dvorak, who is huge. Six foot five, 209 pounds. That physical play is absolutely insane. And I think Arizona will really love that. The way he's able to quiet offenses and just make play boring. He's a player that is just pure defense. I think the Coyotes will enjoy that simplicity. Now going on to 39th overall, the Buffalo Sabres, maybe the exact opposite of that in Hunter Bristovitz. And I think for the Sabres, this would be an interesting one. We, of course, saw the Sabres go after Daniel Butte. I think they'll go for a defenseman here who could be maybe on that bottom pair as a puck mover. Six foot, 187 pounds. But to me, that passing is really just the best part about him. 51 assists in 68 games. The way he's able to read plays, the way he's able to feed players, especially up the rush. He's fantastic in that department. I think Buffalo will really like the way he's able to aid their system. Now on to 40th overall in the Washington Capitals. There'll be another team that ends up taking a goaltender, and I have them selecting Adam Guyon. Obviously an overager, but he's a player that I think for the Cavs, they'll really like to have. Six foot three, 176 pounds, and really rose to start him this last year in the World Juniors for Slovakia, getting a 936 save percentage, but his league play was solid as well. In the NHL, especially in the playoffs there, he was great. And he'll be going to the University of Minnesota Duluth, which I think will be huge for him. But I think as one of the better goaltenders in this draft, the Capitals will want to take advantage. Now let's keep going here with three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back picks here for the Detroit Red Wings, and I think they'll select Anton Wahlberg, Jaden Perron, and Luca Cagnoni with those picks. Now let's first start with Anton Wahlberg, whose physical traits are great, and he really knows how to use it in every single way. Six foot three, 185 pounds, and playing in Sweden this last year, just an imposing force, and I think his goal scoring is an underrated trait and could be brought out a lot at the next level. Next up is Jaden Perron, who I think will definitely be a winger and a really big risk, but five foot nine, 160. 65 pounds can drive play incredibly well and has a great vision for the ice the problem is sometimes those physical traits do hold him back a lot and i think that could be something that holds him back a lot of the pro game but is a big boomer bust prospect just like luka cagnoni and i think the red wings are in a position to take some big risks cagnoni is a smaller defenseman at five foot nine but to me he's a player that has a lot of great transitional play some great puck moving ability and you can see 64 points in 67 games with portland this last year in the regular season he's a player that if his offense really breaks out will be huge in detroit system that has i guess more of a defensive style i think cagnoni could 
could absolutely be a power play demon on the next level for Detroit if everything works out. Now going on to a pretty interesting pick here of 44th overall, another Chicago pick here. I think they'll take Oscar Fisker Molgard. Now, even though the defense, the physical play is something that will be a big work in progress, the solid skill set, the tenaciousness that he still has is great. And he still has the frame that hopefully will be filled out in the next level. But as a centerman, he's a fascinating project and has played pretty solid in the SHL, playing 41 games of HP 71 this last year and was uh, in a pretty big role in the World Championships, even if he didn't get any points there. But to me, he's a player that could round out as potentially a middle six center for them. And I mean, even if he doesn't become a center, has the tools to transition to wing pretty effortlessly. Now going on to 45th overall and the Buffalo Sabres, I have them selecting Alex Yernick. Now as a soul back, 5'10", 179 pounds, the speed and the really quiet skill set will be great there. And as maybe a third line forward of the future, I think Buffalo could really like that depth if of course they don't trade that pick. But he played in the Alice Vince scan at points, honestly was better than Dalibert Dvorsky and was solid in the U20 World Juniors for Slovakia. He's a player that could be a pretty quiet player in this draft, but I think for the Buffalo Sabres will be a really interesting player to have now we're gonna go on to the nashville picks here with 46 and 47 overall i have them selecting casper holton and riley height now first up with holton i think they're gonna love that goal scoring game that physical presence six foot three 207 pounds even though i think there's a lot of work or that he kind of gives to his teammates to have to handle and he's a little bit of a rover on his own lines at times i think for nashville that won't necessarily be a problem because they do have a lot of great play drivers in their system and even in the nhl today on that youth side and of course you got riley Hyatt, who is a play driver himself at five foot ten uh 10 181 pounds plays really quite small i think that will be something that holds him back at least in this nhl draft position but he's a player that does have some good skill and when he is able to make a play has the space to make a play is just brilliant in that department but i think there might be some growing pains which will not just hold him back in the nhl level but could hold him back as well in the draft position too Next up, let's go to 48th overall and go to his Prince George teammate in Cohen Zemer. Now, I am not planned for this, I promise you, but I think the Flames will end up taking Zemer at 48th overall. And this is an interesting position for him. Obviously, the skating is maybe the biggest weakness, but I think it's something that he could come over. To me, though, I feel like with Zemer, he's just going to top out as just a solid third line forward. But I think for the Flames, after already being in that top 16, drafting a lover bonk, I think they'll be fine taking a more high or floor type of player with their second round pick. Now on to 49th overall in your calendars. I have no idea how to read this pick. I can't lie with you, but I'm going to predict that they select Kerry Terrence. Just a solid, speedy, six foot one centerman who played with Erie as well as the USTP this year and was solid in the U18 World Juniors for the States, even though I think he still needs to add a lot of bulk to his frame and use his physicality more because he is a lot bigger than he gives himself credit for. I think there's a lot of potential the Islanders would want to unlock there, and especially as a center, I think they'll be interested. Now up to 50th overall and the last pick of the draft let's go on to seattle kraken's pick i have them selecting bradley nadeau from the bchl now he's going to be playing in the university of maine next year but right now five foot ten 161 pounds and he's just a fantastic playmaker just in every single way he can create and i think that will be his biggest asset going forward you can see the monster numbers in the bchl and even though there is a lot physically that i think he will definitely need to improve upon and will definitely be a project nadeau does have the skill set for seattle to be patient and hopefully it'll work out on the next level where he could be a solid play driving middle six bowl but holy freaking crap i was just talking for 45 minutes of recording time hopefully you guys enjoyed the big top 50 board mock draft for the 2023 nhl draft if you did please consider hitting that like button hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell for more draft content just like this all throughout the year and of course let us know down below what do you guys agree and disagree with my picks who do you see your team taking and who are your mock what is your mock draft for the 2023 nhl draft let us know down below and of course for the video of all the hockey fans you guys know online get them ready for the 2023 draft the right way and click on this card for my 2023 draft content right on one playlist i've said 2023 draft a lot today and I will see you guys in the next one. Have a great day and goodbye.